So why will you be told that you need a cleaning at the dentist? Does your hygienist pick up that spiky thing and go around your mouth calling out numbers? Four, seven, two, eight. Do you know what they mean? Well, I hope I can help you understand how important those numbers are and what you should do about them. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. Today, we'll learn from Dr. Ellie Phillips, a leading expert in dental health. She tackled a big question, do you really need regular dental cleanings? Dr. Phillips will break down what you should know about cleanings and how they impact your oral health. We'll also dive into the world of food discovering which ones can actually heal your teeth and which might be doing more harm than good. If you're looking for natural ways to improve your dental health, stick around for Dr. Phillips' expert insights on keeping your smile healthy. Here's Dr. Phillips to tell us more. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. Really, if you have plaque in any shape or form, build up as tartar or calculus, your dental hygienist is probably want, going to want to scrape it off your teeth. Why do they do this? Well, it lightens the burden of disease in your mouth. And that is the reason for the justification of dental cleanings. But what if you're like me and you have used xylitol, which actually eliminates plaque? I have no plaque bacteria. I have no plaque. Why would I want a dental cleaning? My teeth are covered with healthy biofilm. Your teeth may be the same if you've been using xylitol for six months or longer. So then I do not believe there is any advantage in a dental cleaning. As long as you haven't got pocketing, as long as there's no buildup of calculus, there is nothing going to happen at a dental cleaning that's of any benefit. And if you have a dry mouth, you may have trouble reconstituting the biofilm that is protective of your teeth. So when you go for a regular cleaning, I think it is very appropriate to ask your dentist, do I need a cleaning? I did this. I've done this with people, with hygienists who don't know who I am. And some of the really good hygienists have been wonderful and said, no, you know, honestly, you don't need a cleaning. At which point I'm happy and I leave. So that's a regular cleaning. It's to get plaque or the fluffy bacterial mass that grows on some people's teeth that's called plaque or calcified plaque and calculus off your teeth. And if you do lighten this burden, you will keep your mouth in somewhat healthier state. But it's not really healthy. And what happens eventually, if you keep needing cleanings, sooner or later, you're going to get to the point, usually in your 30s or 40s, somewhere thereabouts, where you have something that they call a pocket. And your hygienist will be going around your mouth with a little spiky thing, measuring pockets, calling out numbers. Two, four, six different numbers. In my opinion, anyone who has a pocket, and that would be anyone who has a pocket of two or three millimeters or higher, needs to do different oral care every single day. Every single day, the way you brush your teeth, the kind of toothbrush you use, what you're using to clean your teeth, I would change everything about what you're doing. Because to allow these pockets to be there is to allow harmful bacteria to live in this gap this pocket between the tooth and the gum. And these bacteria that get in there, they're not plaque bacteria. It's plaque that may cause the, the gum to loosen in the first place. But it is these periodontal pathogens. They're opportunistic bacteria. I know that's a big word, but basically these are bacteria looking for the opportunity to find a dark, low oxygen space where they can grow between your tooth and the gum. And when they grow in there, they basically eat away at the attachment between your teeth and your gums. Nothing stops them. And they go on and on creating pockets that get bigger and bigger and bigger. And basically the attachment of your tooth to the gum gets lower and lower and lower towards the root of your tooth until eventually some teeth will fall out. Because the bone levels are always a set distance from the bottom of the pocket. So if your pocket is gradually getting deeper, you're hearing numbers like six, seven, eight, you are bound to have bone loss occurring in the same time. 
And your dentist believes it's incurable. He believes there is nothing you can do to get rid of these bacteria. And the best thing that he can do for you is to periodically clean this space as best they can. They will jet around with sprays. They will scrape and polish and it's called root, root planing. And they will do everything they can to clean this pocket. But if this pocket is there, opportunistic bacteria live in your saliva. They are floating around in your mouth, just waiting for you to pay the bill. So they will go right back in there as soon as you leave the dental office and start their nasty work all over again. So these deep cleanings, as they're called, go on and on for the rest of your life. The first time you have one probably will be long. You may have to do it in quadrants. That's one side of your mouth at a time. And usually you're charged a hundred or two hundred dollars each quadrant. So you can be paying up to a thousand dollars the first time to have all these areas of your mouth deep cleaned. And then because it's not over, these bacteria will go back and start over again. You will have to go back every three or four months and you may as well budget right now another thousand dollars every year for these deep cleanings. The scary thing is that 50% of 30 year olds have this kind of gum problem with pocketing. So if you've been told you have pockets, you're not alone. Don't ignore them. They're just going to get worse. And if you go back for deep cleaning, it's not going to go away. Now, I'm not opposed to deep cleaning if you want nothing to do with your mouth and you want somebody to do the best they can for you. Enjoy the rest of your life every three or four months at the dental office and budget accordingly. And they will keep you in the best health they can. And it is very dependent on the things that you do because it's dependent on plaque. Do you have a lot of acidity in your mouth? Do you sip drinks all day long? Do you smoke cigarettes and dry your mouth? Anything that dries your mouth or makes it acidic will promote gum disease. It'll promote plaque and it will promote gum disease. Now, it could be simply that you are under a lot of stress, that that dries your mouth, medications. You may be a mouth breather because you have allergies or sinus problems. There are all kinds of reasons, and I can't go through every single one, simply to say, if you are told you need a deep cleaning, you need to make a decision. You either have to put yourself in the hands of your dental office and go for those cleanings, and they will keep you as healthy as they can. It's called maintenance. Or you could go home and use the strategies that I recommend to the letter you have to use the exact products. They are over-the-counter products that you can buy in grocery stores in America very easily and on Amazon. And you use these strategies basically to eliminate plaque, to oxygenate these anaerobic spaces between your teeth so that these anaerobic, nasty periodontal pathogens don't like living there anymore and they will disappear gradually. And it usually takes 12 to 24 weeks using my strategies, if you are a healthy person, to get rid of most of the pocketing in your mouth. So that if you were to do this for the next three to six months and then go back for an evaluation, there is a high probability if you have followed my strategies that you will be told, wow, uh, you look good. Maybe you don't need a deep cleaning. Maybe you're fine. See you in six months. And that is how you can avoid this by your own daily strategies. You must make a decision. When you're told that you have pocketing or periodontal disease or that you need a deep cleaning, this is serious. Don't ignore it. Don't think that your dentist is fooling you. You can take a test to find out a salivary test. You spit into a test tube and measure the bacteria that you have in your mouth and you can tell whether or not they're multiplying by the numbers that are in your saliva. So there is that test and I do help people get that test if you want it, but never ignore it because these bacteria are very bad actors. They can get into your bloodstream. They are associated with everything from Alzheimer's, dementia, heart problems, preterm birth, digestive problems, arthritis, 
Don't allow yourself to ignore. If you have been told you have pocketing, if you've been told you have periodontal disease, either let your dentist deal with it or you deal with it and get yourself to the point where you no longer have any evidence of any disease in your mouth. That's my wish for you because then you will have truly achieved ultimate oral health. Now Dr. Phillips will briefly describe her total mouth care kit. I want to talk about my complete mouth care system, which is a strategy for taking care of your teeth on a daily basis. Back in the 1970s, I began teaching this to mothers with children in the school clinic in Eastbourne, England in the 1970s. I then wrote books about xylitol because nobody had ever heard of xylitol. And that is really part of my complete mouth care system. It is the bit that feeds the good bacteria. So we want to have some xylitol, little mints like the Zellies mints or chewing gum if you would like to chew gum. And I have videos on the use of xylitol, uh, but it, it is a component part. You end every meal with a tooth protective food and one of these tooth protective foods is xylitol. So the easiest thing for me to tell you is take two after meals five times a day. We begin the mouth care system before brushing with a mouthwash that's called Closis. It's called Ultradex in the UK. And this mouthwash interacts with your saliva. And if your saliva is acidic, this is the kind of saliva that promotes really bad oral health. It occurs for women when we are pregnant, we have acidic saliva for nine months. We are stressed, our mouth, men and women, often becomes acidic. When we have been eating, any, especially anything with sugars or carbohydrates, but also healthy foods, even fruits and vegetables, anything that would be like cider vinegar or, or citrus fruit is acidic. And the cool thing is that this mouthwash interacts even more effectively with your saliva that is acidic. Now the next part, once you spit out the closes, you are going to start brushing your teeth. And I recommend a toothbrush that is resilient, that is dense, that has a number of good bristles and a toothpaste that you have seen in the stores for the last 60 years, anyone who has been shopping. And it is very important that it says helps stop cavities before they start. Because this crest, this specific one is the only formulation of toothpaste that has ever been shown to remineralize teeth. Oh yes, the young generation think you need special remineralizing toothpaste at $25 per, per time. That toothpaste has the, the one, if you're thinking about the nano hydroxy appetite toothpaste, that toothpaste has never yet been endorsed by the European Safety Commission. And there is a concern about absorption of nanoparticles, but also that it might form a layer on the outside of your enamel, unlike the way teeth naturally mineralize. So I am going to endorse this toothpaste, which costs $1.95, $2 a tube. This tube should last you for about six months. So don't tell me you're on a budget because you can use this. We want to massage the gums because that basically is a clarion call to stem cells that are in these pink tissues, not far from the gums, from the teeth. And these stem cells will migrate and form new capillary blood vessels to bring nutrients for healing your gums. We want to heal our gums every day. If we do that, they will never become recession. There will be no recession. There will be no loss of attachment. You won't ever suffer gum disease. It isn't an age-related thing. And if you already have pocketing and gum recession, often, I'm not gonna say always, because there are other factors, and we get into that in a separate video, but often you can bring those gums back. You can regrow gums back 
if you will do this kind of toothbrushing. You can wash your toothbrush off in running water and then stand it up. Make sure that your toothbrush, I love these little donutty things. We have a link to those on the website because you can stand your toothbrushes up and uh, they're very handy. They come in different colors. I have to use a black one to remind myself that that's the toothbrush I use at night. And then I have a, a yellow one to remind myself that's the one I use in the morning. Because it, you want to dry your toothbrush between uses. You want your toothbrush to have 24 hours to dry. That is because when you brush your teeth, you are picking up all the bacteria in your mouth and they can multiply in the density of these bristles. And you don't want that because the next time you put your wet, soggy toothbrush back in your mouth, you'll have anaerobic bacteria that can get established in your mouth. Now let's talk about what do you do with all that toothpaste on your teeth that you've just been massaging around your gums and putting it over your teeth. Spit out the big glob and then it's time to rinse the toothpaste off your teeth. And you will rinse it off with Listerine Cool Mint or the one I use is the original. Use the Listerine and then the minute it starts to burn, wash it off with ACT, A-C-T, which is a non-alcohol dilute 0.05 sodium fluoride mouth rinse. Is this acidic? A little bit. Does it matter? No, because the good thing is sodium fluoride works slightly better in a slightly acidic environment. So it's good for everyone at every age, every adult. I think I've covered it all. Hope so. Enjoy. So are there any foods that actually can heal your teeth? And the answer to that lies in some studies that were done, some in Denmark and some in other parts of the country uh, of Europe and also in England, where they actually gave small pieces of cheese to children before they went to school each morning. After breakfast, they had this little piece of cheese. There was one with Edam, there was one with cheddar cheese. And in these studies, it showed that cheese can actually help children prevent cavities. There were less cavities in the children who had this little tiny piece of cheese on the way to school. Now, that's obviously not a complete story and we have to go further than that if we're gonna look at foods and decide which foods are good for our teeth. Really, I'm gonna stop the conversation there though because what we should be doing is looking at our meal times and almost every food that we consume is going to end up making our mouth acidic. And acidity weakens teeth. So the best solution to this is to make sure that you eat and drink and end every meal with what I call a tooth protective food. Now this would be a food that doesn't cause acidity, it doesn't decay your teeth, it doesn't have sugars in it, so it could be something like cheese, which is very tooth protective. Say, you, say you're eating pizza and you're drinking a soda and you're having other foods alongside with it, uh, vegetables and fruits, eat. And you might want to end with a little bit of that pizza cheese. That would be one way of doing this very simply, ending the meal as they do in parts of Europe with a little piece of cheese or something else that is food protective. And I get asked, well, Ellie, what is food protective? Things that like avocado, celery, uh, apples, in fact, are tooth protective. There's enough fiber in a fresh apple, not in apple juice, but in a fresh apple. So there are certain foods that you can end a meal with because they are fibrous, because they do not cause cavities. There are also foods like strawberries and raspberries that are delicious, and they contain a little bit of xylitol. And xylitol is this food that I love because it is so easy to protect your teeth with xylitol. It can be in the form of a fresh strawberry or a fresh raspberry at the end of a meal, or you could get some granular xylitol and actually dip that strawberry into it. The other thing would be to drink whole 
milk. If you are a milk drinker, whole milk is tooth protective as well. And of course, water can wash away the food particles and clean your mouth. So the sequencing is to eat and drink and then try to clean or wash your mouth and then end with a tooth protective food. And of course, xylitol is my favorite because it not only doesn't cause cavities and does protect your teeth and does feed the good bacteria in your mouth, but it also stimulates a flow of the liquid in your mouth, the saliva that cleans our teeth and heals our gums and teeth. And stimulated saliva is even more incredible than resting saliva, the saliva that just happens to be in your mouth. Every time you stimulate with xylitol a flow of the saliva to come into your mouth, it's going to be two units of pH higher, that means more alkaline, more healing, than resting saliva. So what an incredible thing. You can take one gram, two mints, put it in your mouth and heal, help to stimulate the, the saliva flow that will heal your teeth, reverse any demineralization that occurred during eating. And then if you don't eat or drink for an hour or two afterwards, you're going to actually feed the good bacteria in your mouth and develop healthy biofilm. So saliva is really the key to oral health. I want to be the marketing person for saliva because it is incredible to heal your gums and your teeth. The problem with us is we nibble, we snack, we sip. I was discussing this with somebody the other day and they said, what do you mean I'm going to actually sit there without sipping anything for an hour or more? This to some people seems incredible. But this is why we have tooth problems, why we have sensitivity, why teeth get soft and wear away. We have to give our tooth enamel time to directly interact with our saliva. So then we could flip here to a conversation about what kind of foods actually feed our saliva, what foods make our saliva more healing. And these are all the foods that are really good if you're into nitric oxide production. They're very much the same foods. Salad foods, lettuce, celery, beets, uh, onions, mushrooms, garlic, all these good foods that not only help our digestive health, our immune system, but in, in that whole sequencing, our immune system influences our blood content of minerals. And these flow around our body and our salivary glands are where there's an exchange between the blood in our body and our salivary ducts. They, they, in these salivary glands, there is this networking between capillaries, the small blood vessels, and the little ducts of our, the, our salivary glands. And this interaction is where the minerals from our blood go into these ducts are then concentrated and pushed into our mouth as saliva. So what we eat, what's absorbed, which depends on our gut health, what's then circulated around our body, which depends on your exercise and movement, and then it ends up in our salivary glands and finally pumped into our mouth as healthy saliva to support not only our tooth health, our gum health, but the bacteria population in our mouth that protects us from all these, this damage and disease. So food is incredibly important in this cycle, but you have to understand it isn't a direct, not so much a direct influence as an influence through saliva. That is really the way to think about it, in my opinion. So before we start eating all these healthy foods that are going to help our salivary health, it's really important to understand that you have to have good digestive health in order to absorb from your gut the minerals and into your bloodstream, into your immune system to help your immune system. And digestive health is different. Your digestive health, of course, the tube that starts in our mouth, our mouth and our nose are the openings to this tube, goes through our body and Bad mouth health, of course, can influence digestive health. A lot of people with bad mouth health find they have poor digestive health and vice versa. 
we don't actually know which happened first. I have a belief that if you have poor oral health as a child, or you have a lot of fillings and sealants as a child, it can affect your digestive health as an adult. So I have a lot of interest in helping children never have sealants, never have fillings for their digestive health in later life. But your digestive health depends on certain foundational bacteria. And these are the bacteria that we wipe out if we have antibiotic treatments, if we take a course of antibiotics, they can easily wipe out these very delicate and very foundational bacteria. One of the most important is called acromancia. And this particular strain of bacteria, you really cannot, as far as I read in the studies, take it as a probiotic. It's something that you have to nurture in your body. And this is why probiotics for digestive health, I think, are, are a big conversation. And I think there's been a lot of misunderstanding. And certainly, probiotics in the mouth, I feel the same about. It's better to try to look after your mouth bacteria with the habits that you have and the way that I recommend than to simply try to take a probiotic and sort of think you're injecting good bacteria into your mouth, because it doesn't happen that way. We have to support the bacteria that we cultivate in our digestive tract. And for gut health, there are fermented foods that are really great, that will help your digestive tract to become healthier, but you have to start really with these foundational acromancia and the short chain fatty acid that's called butyrate. If you've never heard of butyrate, it's a good thing to start hearing about it because it's the butyrate that actually creates a lining to your digestive tract that allows you to absorb better, to absorb more minerals into your blood, into your system from the foods you eat. And today there is a food pairing uh, science where we learn how we can pair certain foods together to get the maximum benefit from them. This is a big subject and we'll do another video on it, but just to tell you, for example, if you eat a banana with a dairy product like a yogurt, for example, or a custard, the fiber in the banana, the kind of bacteria that that fiber feeds, will allow you to absorb more of the calcium from the dairy product that's, got, that's being eaten with the banana. So it isn't just food now we have to look at, it's combinations of foods. And for acromancia, it appears one of the very best foods you can start to incorporate into your diet is pomegranate, pomegranate seeds, pomegranate fruit, pomegranate juice appears to work well. And then for butyrate, which is the other foundational product or the sort of mucus part, the lining of your gut, you want all the foods that have fiber, fruits, uh, grains, whole grains, uh, vegetables, lots of vegetables, lots of fruits. I mean, these are the things you know you should be eating, but perhaps you don't know why. And if you do incorporate some of those foods, it's not huge quantities, but some of those foods with every meal that you have, or most of the meals you have, and then remember, end the meal with a tooth protective food if possible, and if you don't know what to end it with, have some xylitol. That is the, the quickest, easiest way to deal with this because a little bit of xylitol is going to help stimulate sal salivary flow. And then try really hard not to eat or drink for an hour or two afterwards. Nothing, not even water. Try and do your eating and drinking and then stop. And then during that time, all the good food that you just ate is going to circulate around and it's usually within half an hour that, that the minerals will appear. You can actually do this test with pH testing paper. You will see that your salivary pH will stay high or become higher about a half an hour after a really healthy meal if your digestive processes are working well. Now stress, medications, even being a woman with our hormonal fluctuations and, and so on can change. It makes it harder. And all I encourage you to do is keep at it. Do the best you can. 
go through these periods, being pregnant is so hard because your salivary pH is always acidic, digestive health is challenging, but if you stick to these principles, I believe you will get through those periods of difficulty and enjoy improved oral health for life. Next, watch the Dr. Ellie Phillips Club playlist for more information on more dental health. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments, your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.